Have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Do what you want to do, God. Have your way, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Have your way, Jesus. Say what you want to say. Have your way, Jesus. Y'all say, have your way, Jesus. God, God bless you this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I praise God and all he's done for me. And all God has done for you. My soul cries out, hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. He can save you too. God is saving drug addicts. God is saving drug addicts and getting them, and getting them out of the addicts. God is saving drug dealers when they call on the faith healer, Jesus Christ. God is saving souls around the world. Tell somebody God is still in the saving and blessing miracle business. I praise God for the Prince of Peace. Don't got to smoke no weed. God is all we need. I read your prayer request on the YouTube. I'm going to be getting right to that. I want to thank uh, Brother Joshua for sitting to the Cash App. May God bless you. What an incredible, incredible blessing you sent. I'm so amazed. Sadidra, uh, Caleb, praise God. Brother Joshua and those of you who've been sitting faithfully to the ministry. Praise God. Flame of Fire 8 under Pastor Warren Adams. I want to praise God for you out there for praying for me as I pray for you. I want to see God bless you. I want to see God fix your marriage. I want to see God turn your tears into joy. I want to see God take away that depression and give you rest. That don't got to be depressed. Don't got to take no drug overdose. All we need is the Holy Ghost. Don't need no dope. God is a great hope. Death ain't talking about the Pope. Hallelujah. Don't got to take no angel dust in God we ought to trust. I want to see God save more souls and feed with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's just what God is doing. But it's up to you. It's up to the person to want to be saved. God doesn't force the Bible on nobody. Uh, we're living in scary times, y'all. Oh, my God. You got to pray and fast more than ever. If you don't pray, you're not going to stay. Stay with God. If you don't fast, you're not going to last. Last with God. Last in God. How do you do that? Abide in my words, Jesus said. He let my words abide in you. He said, seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. We're living in critical times now. Oh, yeah. It ain't easy being a Christian. Never was. We're living in critical times. That's why you must have the determination to stay safe. How do you have the determination? Love the Lord that God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Jesus said, if you love me, you know, he said, keep my commandments. You know, it ain't easy being a man of God. I don't even like to call myself a man of God. I don't want to sound like I'm boasting. Amen. I'm working for God. I can let someone else call me a man of God. I want to make sure that I operate the fruits of the spirit. According to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Praise God and I want to live what I preach. You don't know a man of God only by how well he can preach. Yes, we're supposed to preach the truth, but you'll but you'll know a true man of God or a woman of God by their fruits. When they live what they preach, when you practice what you preach. Oh, come on, character. I'm talking about character. I'm just talking about just words. Amen. Not just only be a walker, but not just only be a talker, rather, but be a walker. God is coming back for walkers, not only talkers. Now, if, if preachers are talking the talk but don't walk the walk, then he's not a real man of God. Now, you don't got to be a preacher actually to be a man of God. Man of God is simply someone, man of God simply means someone who loves God, somebody who obeys God, praise God. You don't have to have a title of a minister, of a preacher, of a bishop, or evangelist to be a man of God. Man of God simply means someone who loves the Lord. And when you love the Lord, you obey the Lord. There are many preachers who have titles who are not men of God. You may be a bishop. It don't mean you're a man of God. You may be a pastor of a church. It don't mean you're a man of God. You may have a title of a missionary. It doesn't mean you're a woman of God. Woman of God simply means someone who loves God and who obeys God. And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Love is a verb. Love is an action word. A noun is a person, place, or thing like I always minister. 
That's what she describes the noun, but love is a verb. So when you say that you love God, you show it in your action because actions speak a lot of words. And you know that when you're a man of God and when you're working for the Lord, especially when you're anointed, everyone expects you to be this perfect person. You know? People expect you to be a genie, like you, you snap your finger and make their problems go away. <laughs> especially when you have the anointing. Amen. And every sermon that God give me ain't always a sermon that's going to tickle the ears of people. There's times God do give me sermons about blessings and miracles and how God is going to heal people. And there's other times God give me messages about repentance. And every message that God give me ain't always a goody, goody, goody message. But the Bible said, he shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. St. John chapter 8 verse 32. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, St. John chapter 14, verse 6, the truth and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. We're living in days now. You know, there was a woman who came up to me the other day. She knew me from a church I preached at. She said, Preacher Warren, pray for me. I said, my God, why are you so loud? Always was loud. Preacher Warren, pray for me. Preacher Warren, with prayer. A woman from Africa. And I was just going to get some chicken yesterday. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't feel like praying for nobody. Ari preached, the virtue Ari went out of me. And every time I see this woman, she always asks for the same prayer request. Pray for me, preacher word, I'm going to, preacher word. Pray for me right now. Just loud, everybody hearing it. I said, calm down. And I told her, I'm not gonna pray for you today. So, well, pastor saying that? Pastor, pray for me. I said, no, I'm gonna teach you how to get a prayer through for yourself. You didn't ask me for the same prayer request that you didn't put up before the Lord. Every time I see it, she always got a problem like we don't have problems. Everybody is going through something. Whether you're rich, poor, white, black, Jew, or Gentile, Indian, we all have problems. But sometimes you got to watch people who are always asking you for prayer, but they never pray for you. Oh, come on. The Bible said bearing one another's burdens because you want to be careful that you don't get drained by people who are not trying to repent. Why are you going through so much? Well, I know most of us who are saved, we're going through because the enemy fights against us because he wants to discourage you. Then we get other people who go through because you brought problems upon yourself. Maybe you don't want to live right. You want to get blessed but don't want to come out of mess. Many of you are going through because you're disobedient. Come on. Who the Lord loves, he chases. Why do you think God turned Israel over to Babylon? He turned them over to slavery because they was rebellious against God. They was disobedient. Yeah, God did it. A lot of people don't preach that side of God. We know he's love, but there's times God have turned his people over into slavery. Read the word. He was even angry at Ethiopia. I'm going to teach this thing. Read the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 30. He was angry at Ethiopia. Um, Egypt is in Africa where the great Sahara Desert is at, where the hieroglyphics is written on the pyramids. Because Egypt kept worshiping statues. I want to teach this thing. Someone said, teach Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We thank God for the beautiful weather today, even though it's cloudy. And we thank God for this cloudy day. It's still God's clouds. Uh-huh. I want to teach this thing. It was God who turned them over to slavery. Because they kept worshiping statues and idols. If you read the book of Ezekiel chapter number 30. Also Ezekiel chapter 29. God was saying through his prophet Ezekiel, that he's going to turn them over into cruel masters. Now, the devil didn't do this. God did it because he made God mad. Even Israel made God mad because they kept worshiping Babylonian God, so they, God turned them over to Babylon. God gave Israel specific instructions, thou shalt not worship any graven images or idols, and they did just what God told them not to do and did it anyway and made God angry and provoked him to anger. And he turned them over into Babylon until they came back to God and repented. Some of these things that we go through in our life, we bring it upon ourselves and then we blame the devil. You can't blame the devil for everything. There are people who open the door for the devil to have his way when, you be, when you're disobedient and you disobey God's word. That leaves room for the enemy to come in and attack you because you're not abiding in God's word and not allowing God's word to abide in you. So when people ask me for prayer, she said, Preacher Warren, pray for me, Preacher Warren, Pastor. I said, look, calm down. I said, I'm going to teach you how to get a prayer through. 
fast. Pray. I didn't mention fasting so many times to God's people. They like folk don't like to fast. And you pray but don't want to fast. Some demons, Jesus said, come out by fasting and praying. For want to just eat, eat, eat. I like to eat. Don't get me wrong. I like to eat. I like to eat junk food and good food. When it comes down to fasting, especially many of you out there who like doing more eating than praying, not to insult anybody because I'm that way too. Sometimes I slacked up in my prayer life. But fast and pray, not only pray. And also pray and obey. There's something wrong if your prayer is not being answered. Now, I know many times God takes us through tests and trials and tribulations. And, and many times God doesn't always answer our prayer right away. And there's, and there's times he do answer our prayer right away. So I know many times he want to build up our patience. But there's other cases where God doesn't answer prayer because many people are not answering him. People are acting like God is a genie. He ding, 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 ding. Y'all remember Genie? The Major Nelson. Y'all remember him? We used to watch Genie growing up. G Jesus is not Genie. Come on, tell us when Jesus is not Genie. Genie not gonna tell you to repent. Genie not gonna tell you that you must be born again. Genie not gonna tell you to stop fornicating and committing adultery and come out the witchcraft and stop being jealous and hateful. Genie ain't gonna tell you that. All Genie gonna tell you, Master, my wish is your command, Master. Bing. You know how Baba Eaton used to play Genie? And give you anything you want. Where God, where we are not God's master. God is our master. Oh, come on. That's why I don't like to call no one no grand master. When God said, call no man your master. Only our heavenly father is our master. All this grand master and you know, you know, all this most honorable one, the most honorable one is God. God said, I am the Lord, and the Lord is my name and my glory. I will not give to another. Praise God. So now we, we, we thinking that Jesus is like Santa Claus. Jesus, do not confuse Santa Claus with Jesus. <laughs> Come on. Santa Claus ain't going to tell you you must be born again. Or he's going to say, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Santa Claus ain't going to tell you you must be born again. Have you ever heard of Santa Claus say you must be born again? Have you ever heard of Santa Claus tell people to repent and come to Jesus? If Christmas is supposed to have something to do with the birth of Jesus, why we never heard Santa Claus even talking about Jesus? Because Santa Claus ain't nothing but the devil. Santa Claus means Satan want to grip you in his claws. Santa Claus ain't going to tell you to stop shacking and stop going with another woman's husband, another man's wife. Santa Claus ain't going to tell you, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband, according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 7, verse 2. You ain't never heard Santa Claus say that. Oh, he say, be a good little boy and a good little girl, and you're going to get toys. Jesus is not Santa. Jesus is not genie. Santa Claus did not shed his blood on the cross. Genie didn't shed his blood on the cross. Jesus did. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Not Genie, not Santa Claus. So people just expect just to get blessed but don't want to come out of mess. Folk want to hold on to mess and just expect God to bless. Now don't get me wrong. God do reign on the unjust and the just. But my God, I said to her, I said, fast and pray and learn how to get a prayer through for yourself, daughter. Stop always depending on the pastor. I'm going to pray. But pray, for, but pray for the pastor too. Pray for the pastor's wife. Pray for the preacher. Pray one for another. I'm not God. I'm not perfect. Come on. I was a sinner. Saved by grace just like you. And people think because you have the anointing, they think you're genie. Like you can just, there's one woman right now mad at me because her prayers wasn't answered. That's not my fault. There's times I pray for people and God answered prayer. And there's times I pray for people and God doesn't always answer prayer. God has his reasons why he doesn't always answer prayer. There are a lot of things I prayed that God did not answer, and there's a lot of things I did pray that God answered. So now this woman was going through a problem with the baby father, and uh, she has her children and had a court case. So I guess now she don't speak now because she didn't ask me for prayer over and over. We, I didn't pray, 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 even fasted. Looked like things got worse for her. <laughs> You ever felt this way before, beloved? You know, before you, praise the Lord, my brother. 
God bless you. You too blessed to be stressed. Hallelujah. Young man got saved right here. He was on drugs and Jesus set him free. Now he prays in God right there. He'll be baptizing people in Jesus' name. Have you heard the preacher preach before you got saved? And they made the altar call. And they said, Lord, touch those in the cop car right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Touch them right now in the cop car. Hallelujah. Save them with the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, before we got saved, we heard the preacher preach. Someone told us about Jesus. I grew up in the church, and there's those who did not grow up in the church. Praise God, but someone told you about Jesus. And they said, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. He cares about you. Come to Jesus. God been calling for you, and they invite you over to the church, and they embrace you with love. There's so much love in that church. Not, not every church have love, but I'm talking about the churches who do have love. They embrace you with so much love in that church. They said, welcome to Jesus. Everyone embraced you. They was happy, crying. Your mother was happy. Your father was happy. Praise God. And your boyfriend was happy. Uh, your girlfriend was happy. Who you want to marry? Because she's been praying for you to be saved. Amen. You came to the Lord. You might have been a prostitute. You finally came to Jesus. The Lord then healed you from the flashbacks of child molestation. He then healed your heart. And you think everything is going to be peaches and creams. You think now that you came to Jesus, everything going to be all right. Have you noticed when you come to Jesus, all of a sudden now, you're going to a financial problem. <laughs> all of a sudden now, you start to lack. Bills piling up. All of a sudden now, you're going through all this attack. That's why when I tell people about Jesus, I want to prepare people that when you come to Jesus, yes, he's with you, but you're going to be under attack. Tell the devil, get back in the name of Jesus. They don't prepare you for these attacks. They can say, when you come to Jesus, everything going to be all right. Many of you might have been a prostitute, a drug dealer. You was making all kind of money in the world for the, for the devil. You used to carrying thousands of something dollars in your pocket. Many of you prostitutes was escort, doing escort service. Many of you still doing escort service, even in the church. Oh, yeah. That's another story. You used to making big money. Now you come to Jesus. You ever notice now, all of a sudden now, your finances are being attacked. You're starting to lack. <laughs> you, you're getting fought on every hand all of a sudden. You say, wait a minute. When I came to Jesus. I thought everything was going to be all right, Lord. I knew I can go through all this. The devil fighting against you. Your children turned against you. Your husband acting up. Your wife acting up. Your so-called friends don't want nothing to do with you anymore. You say, well, maybe I'm serving the wrong God. I thought everything was going to be all right. So let me come to Pastor Warren. Let me come to Preacher Warren. Can you pray for me, Preacher Warren? I'm just under attack. I'm going through. They begin to pray, and God do work miracles in many people's cases. In other cases, it's like things are getting worse. The times I prayed for certain people, it's like my prayers wasn't getting through. Like it was a war. They have it. You experienced that before? You pray for yourself, look like it ain't going nowhere. Then you start to get bitter against God. Well, I thought you said you love me, Jesus. I thought everything was going to be all right, Lord. <laughs> now you begin to go through all this suffering. <laughs> but Jesus never promised that the road is going to be easy. But he did promise that I'll never leave you. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. I begin to find out this Christian walk ain't easy. But the Bible said they that live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. But the Bible also said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. You begin to find out the closer you get to God, the more you get attacked. Praise God. I told her, I said, let me teach you how to pray. So they just said, Pastor, pray for me. I'm going through. She didn't tell me what she was going through. Like, like we don't go through anything either. So let me teach you how to fast and pray. Let me show you. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. She done fought against her husband so many times. Then started fights with her husband. Maybe that's why the man didn't come to church no more. Maybe that's why he not saved. Because you fight against him. You causing him not to want to even come to church. Maybe you saying, oh, can you pray for my husband? He need to get saved. But then you bossy with the mouth. Or they're starting fights with your husband. Here you go on to church and he don't go to church. 
but you're not being an example to your husband. You're saying to your husband, you need to get saved. And here you up there cussing your husband out. Starting fights with your husband. The man done told you, I don't want to argue. That's enough. Who you think you are? You ain't God. You ain't my father. I don't want to argue. Okay, you get the last word. All right already. And you supposed to be saved and you cussing at your husband. Then you come to me and say, well, can you pray for my husband? He need to come to church. But you're starting fights with your husband. Man, that's why he ain't coming to church. Man, that's why he ain't saved yet. Then she come to Preacher Warren. Preacher Warren, pray for me, pastor. I'm going through. Come on, you're, 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 you're causing your own problems. Say, Lord, fix this tongue. Fix this mouth. The Bible says the tongue is as a fire. Certain things people bring upon themselves. You can't always blame the devil for everything. If God didn't told you, stop going down to the witch doctor. And you still go down to the witch doctor. After God didn't told you, I'm against witch doctors. Then you open up portals for demons to attack you. God didn't put his word here. That's why he should abide in my words. And let my words abide in you. Because after he sets you free, now God wants to teach you how to stay free. I read you a prayer request, Brother Junior. You said you're wrestling with a generational curse. I know you came, your family came from Haiti. I know a lot of them do witchcraft in Haiti just like they do here in America. Do all that evil voodoo. Many of you think, you say that's your religion, but that's a demonic religion. God does not magnify voodoo. God's spirit is powerful. His power is greater than magic and voodoo. The Bible declares... And Leviticus not saying Junior is in Guru, not saying you in. I know your family was in it. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31 said, With God not them who have familiar spirits, neither seek after the wizards. Wizards are male witches, like I most of the time preach. Y'all know that. I am the Lord, your God. God is against witches. Exodus, my God, there's so many witches in the church and outside the church. Be careful who you marry. You don't know who's a witch these days. They start off so nice pretty church girl he's a church man she got a prayer veil on dressing holy he dressing holy a preacher we are getting married going to honeymoon everything doing really good honey i love you oh, i love you too baby i love you honey i love you too baby everything is honey pie and honey pun giving each other valentine's three months go by all of a sudden now my name is lucifer all of a sudden now her voice sounding like the devil you didn't know she had demons in her. You got to pray before you get married so you won't be marrying the devil's woman. The devil got witches and warlocks sitting right in church. They come pretty. They come handsome. Come on. Some of them, they try to put stuff in your food. They start off real nice at first. Oh, I love the Lord. Next thing you can know it, the man gets as wicked and gets as evil as he can be. The devil come handsome. The devil come pretty. The devil know what you like. The devil come tall. Handsome with a six-pack. He know you like muscles But he ain't paying no child support The devil come real pretty the devil ain't gonna come looking like Dracula or the werewolf or Frankenstein The devil gonna come pretty. That's why the Bible said Satan come as an angel of light The devil gonna come beautiful. Oh, he know what kind of woman you like He know what kind of man you like but she's a witch who needs to switch for being a witch and He's a male witch just as evil just as wicked as he can be and so, a lot of them go to church. Only have a form of godliness, but, but denying the power. You got more devils in the church now than you find outside the church. They sit right in the pool pit. Come on. You got to be careful now. That's what you got to pray. I'm going to pray for you, Junior. Now, you said you've been wrestling with a generational curse. You've been battling. You're already free. We already prayed. God already sets you free from that generational curse. Now, I want to teach you how to stay free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said, Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Can I teach? Teach each. Preach to reach each. Stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty. Oh, Lordy, Lordy. Where Christ had made you free. Be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Now I want to teach you how to stay free. Many of you already got the liberty. Now I want to teach you how to stay delivered. How to stay free. Stay in God's word. Keep fasting and praying. Stay in the word. Get people come to the prayer line many times. hundred times. Can you pray for me, preacher? I'm going through. And then when the preacher prays, and God healed the person, and God delivered the person, two weeks later, 
They back into bondage again. Can you pray for me, preacher? I'm going through. So wait a minute, I just prayed for you two weeks ago. You know why? Because you have not learned how to stay free. Oh, come on, tell someone, stay free. Because the devil gonna try to get you back into bondage. He's tenacious. You must be just as tenacious and as determined like the devil to stay free and say, devil, I came too far to turn back now. I'm not going back to what the Lord have brought me out of. I'm not going back to Egypt. I want to get free and then go back in the world. I'm not saying you, I'm just talking in general. If I want to get free and back in the sin. If I want to get free and back in the clubs. I want to get free and, and still shacking and fornicating. Still committing adultery and still jealous of one another. If I want to get free but don't want to stay free. If I want to be free by God but don't want to serve and obey the one who set them free. Oh, come on. If I want to pray but don't want to obey. I'm talking about myself too. Tell us someone, pray and obey. Not only just pray. After you pray, then obey. When you don't obey, that's why God does not answer. Oh, come on. When you pray. Ah, that's what the Bible, oh, that makes sense, right? Well, now you, that's not hard to understand. A child can understand that, my brothers and sisters. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 said, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn, turn from their wicked ways. Then God said, I will come and hear from heaven. I will forgive your sins and I will heal the land. Now God can heal the land. Go to verse 15. Then God said, now my eyes will be opened in this place. Now God will heal. Because the Bible declares in Isaiah chapter 59 that your sins have came between you and God. That has separated you and God. And your iniquities have caused him to hide his face. God isn't like sin. He doesn't like iniquity. It caused him to hide his face like this. Iniquity is envy, jealousy, unforgiveness, malice. Oh, come on. It caused him to hide his face. He doesn't answer prayer. But when we get rid of iniquity and get rid of sin, then that's when the Lord will come in. Oh, see how simple that is to understand? Are we perfect? No, but we're striving for perfection. God's grace is sufficient for you and me. And his strength is made perfect in weakness. We got to watch and pray, y'all. My Lord is so many lesbians. Oh my God. So many Solomites. But Lord, I think the I think the lesbians outnumber the Solomites, the homosexuals. My God is so many lesbians. My God is so many lesbians. In church and outside of church. Honey, you gotta be careful who you married these days. So many lesbians. Oh, so many Solomites. You gotta be careful who you marry. Oh my God. Say amen to somebody. I had a woman pastor one time. Somebody she's a woman of God and said she'd been ordained. I'm like, who ordained her? She'll be acting like a man. Praise the Lord, everybody. A woman signed this way. Now my voice is deep. Something like a Barry White. Her voice was even deeper than my voice. A woman told me she'd been ordained. I'm like, who, who ordained her? Many of you bishops are ordaining people who God never called. Come on. Who God never anointed to preach. How are you going to sit up there and ordain a dyke, a butch, a bull dagger, knowing she don't have the Holy Ghost? How are you going to sit up there and ordain a sodomite who has a man gay lover on the side just because he giving you big money to your church? Oh, come on. Do you put him in the pulpit? You got them preaching the word? They ain't got no anointing, no power. Just sucking the life out of people because they ain't living right. You're going to preach right, live right. Come on, come on. People getting ordained that God never ordained. Got the wrong people in the pulpit. Pastor, they're still cheating on his wife. Going to every girl he prayed for. Going back to his wife with a hickey on his neck. And your wife didn't give you the hickey. Another, your secretary gave you the hickey. You and the secretary is going to hell if you don't repent. My God, there's so many lesbians in the... My Lord. They had a woman... Had a fist like this. She said, praise the Lord, preacher Warren. Woman, they sign like a man. I said, don't be, coming, don't be trying to claim me. I'm definitely ain't going to be your husband. Come on. Women supposed to be ladies and men supposed to be men. Living in days now. You know I'm telling the truth. But I'm telling you, it ain't no lie. It's been going on. Women wants to be men, men wants to be women. If it don't apply, let it fly. 
He said, praise the Lord, preacher Warren. Fits all up. I said, Lord, this woman punched me. I'm going to knock her out. I said, I don't forgot she was, I almost forgot she was a woman. I don't believe in abuse. But lesbians got it more easier now because Jesus loved lesbians, but he doesn't love the lesbianism. Jesus loved gays, but he hates the ways. Same way God loves those of us who are straight, but he hates where we hate. God want to give you the Holy Ghost, not a homo ghost. You lesbians have it easy in church because you're married and you are bisexual and you married to a man of God and you are there starting fights with your husband, punching him in the face. Now, if he hits you back, at the moment, he done forgot that you are a woman because you're acting like a man. I don't understand how a woman can ask God for a man and you want to be a man. Oh, Lord, give me a man, but then you want to be the man. Oh, Lord, give me a wife, but you want to be a woman, a wife. Come on. Come on. Say, stay in your lane. I had women writing church who were saying, Preacher Warren, can you pray that God give me a man? I said, first, before you ask God for a man, stop acting like a man. Too many women wants to be a man. You want to be masculine. Then you up there punching your husband all in the face. And then when he hits your back, they can know you're going to call the cops. Well, at the moment, he done forgot that you was a woman because you acted like a man. Come on. They don't preach this in church. Well, I'm going to call the cops on him. Lock him up. Somebody will lock you up. Come on. The Bible said, women, submit yourself to your own husband. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. But we're living in days that women want to be men. Men wants to be women. So now he doesn't forgot that you are a woman. Come on. Cause now you are there punching me all in the face and acting like a man. I'm not preaching this over this. I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to talk about stuff. So now I hear you a woman, but then you have a man spirit. But you sign like a man. And then talking about that you a preacher of the gospel. <laughs> God loves you. We're praying for you. This stuff goes on in church. This stuff goes on in marriages. Then he comes to pastor, Preacher Warren. Preacher Warren, can you pray for me? My husband, he abused me. Now, he may have assaulted you, which I don't believe in abuse. I don't believe in that. But don't make it hard for your husband, women of God. Don't make it hard for your wife. Provoking him to anger. The Bible said provoke. Don't do not provoke one another to anger. Do not provoke one another to wrath. Before you get married, get delivered from the flashbacks of the past. Many of you bringing baggage in your relationship, and now you're taking your baggage. God bless you, young man. I'm happy to see you today. God is blessing this young man. He's been walking better. We had him praying. God is blessing him. To God be the glory. I'm not the healer. God is the healer. I don't take no credit. Then you are bringing baggage in your relationship because you was abused by your father, abused by your mother, and now you are there punching your husband in the face and punching your wife and drinking and alcohol, getting drunk and all messed up. And you need God to deliver you. Get on your knees and fast and pray and cry out to God and say, Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Heal me, Lord. My God, I'm talking about lesbians for a reason. I saw a woman the other day. Is she arguing with the other woman? Cussing and carrying on, sounding like a man. Yeah, I don't like that. Ooh. They had this other giant dike and this other facility. Giant, big books. So I pray for her. Are oh, they liking women? Here she married to a man. I said, Lord, Ben got jealous one time of me. And Lady Priscilla, because we were holding hands. I said, I hope she ain't lusting after Lady Priscilla. Because Lady Priscilla ain't definitely ain't no lesbian. Now you're surrounded by women like this in church. Not everybody's a lesbian. Diane Shepherd is not one. She's a real woman of God. Handmaid, real woman of God. We got real men of God like Brother Jackson. I saw your prayer request. You said you're praying for a financial breakthrough. But I want to keep it real. We're talking to substance, there are a lot of preachers don't touch on in church. I went to a church one time, my God. They had sodomites in the pulpit. Oh my God, they had a woman, books all in the choir, up there preaching the word, had a woman lover on the side. I said, how can you preach to me? And you kissing on women. I said, you can't tell me about Jesus. And you ain't living right yourself. 
Ah, oh, come on. Amen. Amen. Should they preach the word? Hacking like a man, too. Ha. And the Lord ha. and Jesus is coming. She was hacking like a man. It, no feminine whatsoever. What she preached was right, but what she was living was not right. Now, I don't, I don't understand how this pastor ordained this woman who wants to be a butch to be a preacher. One woman says she was ordained to be a pastor. Of they chasing after other women's husbands. How are you a pastor and chasing after another woman's husband? She ain't trying to get her own husband. And then she older than this man and she want to control him with a witchcraft. Uh-oh, preach Holy Ghost. Preach on stuff a lot of folk ain't going to talk to him. Be careful what you eat. <laughs> Everyone who said they called to be a pastor or a preacher, it don't mean God ordained them. Look what Jesus said. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 20, he was talking to the pastor of the church, the angel of the church. He said, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffered that woman Jezebel, yeah, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess. So God said, I didn't call her to be no prophetess. She called herself to be a prophetess. To teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. He said, I gave her time to repent. She teaches them to offer things, sacrifice on the idols. He said, I gave her time to repent. So she repented not. Still wearing mini skirts. Went around seducing men in the church. Then we had these men Jezebels out there doing witchcraft. There's some pastors down in Africa and here in America out there putting snakes in somebody's mouth. What kind of mess is that? There's a pastor right now got women wearing bikinis in the pulpit half naked. He and the woman is going to hell. Come on. How you got women in your pulpit wearing bikinis? What kind of church is that? That's a playboy church. And you women dumb enough to let these pastors take advantage of you. He acting like the pimp and you acting like whores. God didn't call you to be no whore. God did not call you to be no pimp. God called you out of darkness and to his marvelous light. Now you cannot tell a church now from a strip club. Amen to somebody. But they're laying hands on women's breasts. Only breast he should be laying hands is his wife. Come on, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Dang. God is sick of the mess. God's going to clean house. He's going to clean house. Tell us when you want to be caught up, get cleaned up. Don't be inviting folk to your church and know your church ain't right. And you got Jezebels and Sodomites running the church. To my Jesus love you, cut in my church. And then once folk come to your church, now you all evil and wicked and jealous. Once, once when God begin to use that woman, our man in your church, and God is raising them up, now you are there trying to fight against that woman or that man. They didn't know the church was so bad because you made it because you was wearing a mask. Men like your soul love it. But Jesus said, love one another as Christ have loved you. Jesus said by this, all men will know you're my disciples if you have loved one for another. God is not racist. You racist folk in the church. You can't say you a Christian and discriminate. How you got a, a white church next door to a black church you won't speak? You got black on black crime. Africans up there don't like black African Americans and we all black. Discriminating against each other. Black on black crime. The time to stop the crime and say, Jesus, I want you to be mine. Let us unite and let's not fight and let's get with Jesus Christ. Let it be unity in the community. Ain't nothing racist about me. I love whites and blacks. Indians and Chinese. Come on. I don't like the wicked ways. Too much envy among God's people. Woman says she's been ordained to be a pastor. And just as butchy as she can be. I'm going to pray for her. But God loves her. He doesn't love the sin. Can't preach to me. Can't preach to God's people. You ain't living right to yourself. Manish. Come on. Get to pray before you get married these days. Some of them be bisexuals. Bisexuals. She loving you and they got a woman lover on the side. Sit right in church. Then they got these women prophetesses. Oh, come on. We got all these women prophetess. Acting like men. Then you got the men up there acting like women in the church. He, somebody here, a bishop. And got a Masonic ring on. A Mason, an Eastern star. You already know God is against Baphomet. Masons worship Lucifer. They don't worship Jesus. 
So even though you're preaching the word, but you're serving two masters. Jesus said, love the one and hate the other. Oh, Lord. Lord, Lord. No man can serve two masters. I don't go to everybody's church, everyone's church I'm invited to. You got witches and warlocks on the church. Remind me of Hollywood. Remind me of Diddy. Diddy's sins caught up to him. Doing all them sex parties and sex traveling. Now he in prison. Will you make a pact with the devil? The devil will come to collect when the contract is up. That's why Jesus said, what profits a man? If he gain the whole world, if he gain the whole world and lose his soul. Come on, people making packs with the devil even in church. This is fame and fortune. The devil would tell that woman, seduce another woman, lay with a man. Talking about you pastors who made a pact with the devil. Yeah, you preaching God's word, but you got false miracles going on in your service. There's lying signs and wonders. How you a man of God and laying up with a man? How you say you're a woman of God and you a woman laying up with another woman or they're kissing on another woman? So but here you the judge, it's the truth. Eddie Long will lessen out the little boys. If Eddie Long did repent, Eddie Long is in hell. Ain't no child molesters going to heaven. I don't care if you a bishop or a pastor. If you a child molester, come on. The Bible said hell has enlarged itself for you without mess. Repent now and say, Lord, forgive me. And he'll forgive you for your sins. Come on. These witches are their soul traveling out their body three o'clock in the morning time, doing devil worship. Then you're back in church on a Sunday morning and think God didn't see your mess? Are they seeing witch doctors? And try to put curses on people's marriages and put spells on people. I see it in the spirit. Then you were there lusting after the man of God's wife. Uh, praise the Lord, first lady. Oh, you so pretty. You got a lesbian spirit. Lusting after other women. Women, you got to be careful who you, you call your friend. Come on. Living in days now where they promoting all this gay right. Rainbow flags and gay pride. God didn't, didn't, God ain't proud about it. Just because the government says it's right, that don't mean God said it's right. The Bible says a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Hallelujah. The Bible said that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Santa Claus cannot give you that gift because Santa Claus ain't nothing but the devil. Santa Claus means Satan want to grip you in his claws. Jesus can give you the Holy Ghost. You don't need no drug overdose. God bless the cops. Bless the police force. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless them, Lord. Save them, God. Fill them with the power of your Holy Spirit. You don't need no drug overdose. All you need is a Holy Ghost. Yeah, Lord. Come on. This ain't no goody goody preacher. This ain't no money making message. I love people. I love your soul. I love my soul. That's why he said preach the truth. When you love people, you tell them the truth. When you love people, you tell them the truth. Sometimes the truth hurts. But I thank God for the truth. Somebody had to tell me the truth. I didn't like it, but I thank God for the truth. It made me a better man. It made me a better person. Praise God. That's what the Bible says. He shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. St. John chapter 8, verse 32. A lot of pastors ain't going to preach on these subjects. They're going to tell you, money is coming. Everybody going to shop then. What's the sense of having all this money and still die and go to hell? Yeah, I don't mind having a lot of money, but I want my soul to be saved. I don't mind being blessed with houses and cars, but I want my soul to be saved. Because money ain't going to buy you out of hell. When the rich man died, he went to hell and his money did not save him out of hell. Ain't nothing wrong with having a lot of money as long as you don't worship money. The Bible said that the love of money is the root of all evil. It didn't say money is evil. It said the love of it. God understands that we need money to pay the rent and the bills, but don't worship it. Preachers are worshiping money. Making the pact with the devil for money. Come on, come on, come on. God going to clean these churches out. It's hard to know who to marry these days. You don't know if she's a bisexual or a lesbian. You don't know he's a sodomite. It's hard to even get married these days. 
You don't know he a transvestite or a drag queen. God ain't called no man to be no drag queen. Your wife is supposed to be the queen, not a drag queen. Drag yourself to the altar and say, Lord, I'm going to stop being a drag queen and I'm going to pray to the king of kings. Your husband is supposed to be the king and your wife is supposed to be the queen. And we're supposed to both worship the king of kings. Oh, come on, come on. And love God more than you love each other. Scary, bro. Scary. You get married these days, you don't know she's on assignment by the devil. You don't know he's on assignment. Especially when you anointed. You got to be careful who you get involved with. Especially when you anointed. Pray before you get married so you won't marry the wrong one. You never find a perfect one, but don't marry the wrong one. They start off nice at first. Hi. Hi, I love you. A couple of months later, my name is Lucifer. Now, wait a minute. Her voice is sounding like the devil, like Linda Blair from Exodus. He found the man's a warlock. He didn't start off like that at first. It's like he was a man of God. That stuff is scary. We're living in days now. You can't tell who's who now. You don't know who's real. You don't know who's fake. That's why you must put your eyes on God because it's hard to tell who your friends are these days. One day they're your friend. Next day they stabbing you in the back. Are they jealous of you? Like, why are you so jealous of me? You got more than me. <laughs> you ever felt that way before? So why are you so envious of me? You got more than me. Hey, I'm still struggling. Then you living in the shelters. And they think because you're wearing a nice dress that you don't go through no struggle. Then they get envious of you and try to take the little that you got. Now they're going down to witch doctors or they're trying to put curses on you. The curse ain't going to work. Come on, tell us when the curse ain't going to work. There ain't no weapon that's formed against you. Shall prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to give you a stricture that the Lord told me to give you all out there. For those who's going through, for those who need a breakthrough, all of a sudden now you're going through financial problems. Now some people just don't manage their money right. So I can't always blame it on the devil now. You get your money, pay the bill, pay the rent, and what money you have left over, also your wife and husband. Take care of your wife, take care of your children, take care of your husband. Some people don't know how to manage money. And then when all the money is spent, now you ain't got nothing left. Now you say, oh, give me a financial miracle, Jesus. We got to be wise. Are you giving your tithes to the right house? Oh, come on. Let's go there. Someone say go there before I give you this other scripture. Many of you are giving your tithes or your money to false prophets. When you send your money to false prophets, bad things happen. Now your finances are getting attacked. Where are you sowing at? When you send your money to these false prophets on the word channel, begging for money, send me $2,000 in the mail, y'all going to get a miracle. You ain't get no miracle yet. He got all your money. Connor, you out your pocketbook. Man up there, he's in the Illuminati's, Freemasons, doing witchcraft. You sending your money, honey, to the wrong one. That's why them bad things happen like that. All of a sudden now, you're going to do financial problems. Poverty is attacking you. Are you giving to a true man of God's ministry? Are you giving to a false prophet ministry? Let's go to the scripture first. Bring ye all tithes in the storehouse, that ye may have meat in my house. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Let's get into God's word right now. Look what it says. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Look what it says. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Can I teach? That there may be food in my house. And prove me now, herewith says the Lord, herewith says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. So when you give tithes, your money to God's house and not a gay house and not a witchcraft house and not a devil worshiping house, but when you give tithes to God's house, again, God will bless you. Praise God. Every church, every church that you go to does not mean it's God's house. It's just a church building. When they got them child molesters up in the Roman Catholic Church and letting child molesters be priests, that ain't God's house. God ain't got no child molesters, not in his house. 
God's house is holy. If the pastor's not preaching holiness and telling you that you must be born again and repent, that church is not God's house. If they're letting lesbians and dykes and witches and warlocks take over the church and letting wicked people take over the church, that ain't God's house. Then you're giving your money to the wrong house. That's why you're being cursed with poverty because you're giving your money to the devil's house. When you give your money to God's house, that's when God begins to bless you. That's what he said in Malachi chapter number 3 verse 10. See? Let's go into it. Can I read again? Read. Let's go to it. Then God will bless you. Then God will prosper you and meet your every need. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Not to a false prophet. Not to a word channel preacher begging you for money. To asking you for $2,000 and calling you out your pocketbook and he don't care nothing about your soul. He don't care about the homeless. He ain't trying to feed nobody. The man already got five jets. The man already got five limousines. What did he need more money for? He need to be blessing you. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Bring all the tides to the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Now God will bless you. Now God will supply your every need. Praise the Lord. If we are down to your last dime, Jesus will step it on time. When you got no food in the refrigerator, God is better than a smooth operator. Ain't that right? He'll supply your every need when you seek ye first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen, sister. He's going to bless you and your child. He's trying to make you the head and not the tail. Oh, Lord. He's trying to make you above only and not beneath. Woo. When you obey God's holy word, he's trying to make you the head and not the tail. I make you above only and not beneath if you keep God's holy commandments. If you obey his word, he said, I will bless you. Let's read the rest of the scripture. I love this word. There's some good word here, y'all, from the Lord. Bring ye all tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Now God will supply. He'll fill your fish already up. He'll fill your bank account up when you give to God's house. We are the house of God. We are the church. When God is in your heart, we, when God is in your heart, you the church. God not coming back to the church building. Not wrong with the church building. But when God is in your heart, you become the church. You become the temple of the Holy Spirit. When you present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I feel Jesus right now. With the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen, my brother. That's my Holy Ghost transit worker over there praising the Lord right now. Holy. God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44 huh? and verse 45. Also, he told Israel that and it applies to the church of Glicia. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Go back to Malachi chapter number 3, verse 10. Bring ye all tithes in the storehouse that there may be food in my house and prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, Whoa, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. And not just only just talking about money, but when you encourage each other, you're giving to God when you pray for each other. You're giving to God when you bless each other. You're giving back to God when you bless your brother and sister. You're blessing God when you visit the sick. You're visiting Jesus when you're helping somebody in need. You're helping God because Jesus said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was sick, you visit me. And then the sheep would tell Jesus, when with this? Jesus is going to say, when you visit the sick, you was visiting me. Hallelujah. Not folk who don't want to serve God and you just want 50 cents, but don't want to work. You say, oh, give me 50 cents. I want a dollar. No, you want crap. Come on. Stop playing around with God. Praise the Lord. He said, oh, oh, I want a dollar. Oh, I want 50 cents. No, you want that crack. You want that drug. Come on. Drugs will mess you up. Let the Lord give you a hug. You don't need no drugs. I had a woman down the street one time. She said, can you give me 50 cents? I said, that's a dollar demon. That drug will have you begging for a dollar. That drug will have you begging for 50 cents. And then you're taking the drug and then buying crack. God bless you, brother. Good to see you again.
Hallelujah. We don't need no crack. Just run to where Christ is at. And the Lord can deliver you from crack when you get out the prayer prayer match. Praise the Lord. I had to rebuke a man one time in the subway. He said, oh, this happened in New York City. Where I was, I was born in Harlem. I started preaching the gospel in Harlem. And the Bronx on the street since I was six. No, since I was 12 years old. And I started preaching in the church when I was six years old. Before I moved here to New Jersey. Man, they're begging a girl 15 years old for a dollar. Can I have a dollar? Now here this girl up there trying to go to school. Grown man up there asking her for a dollar. All he want was drugs. Crack. And sometimes these folk who ask you for money got more money than you and me. Tell me, can I have 50 cents? No, you want drugs. You want that crack. Do you say, oh, I'm hungry. I want food. No, you want them drugs. Can't fool God. Many of you love the drugs more than you love Jesus. Folk want money. Folk want to get rich, but don't want to obey God. Come on, come on. That's your choice. Cast not your prayer before swine. Give not that which is holy to the dogs. If you say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. I want to make a change. I'm going to go in the drug rehab center. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. In the name of Jesus. I ain't playing around with the devil. You must understand the devil is not your friend. He's your enemy. Jesus said the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Come against the demons of witchcraft right now. Whoever putting out witchcraft. Go back to the pit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Take authority over demon spirits. We can't be nice to the devil. The devil ain't nice to you. Use the weapons that God has given you, saints of God. You got more power than you think you do. Jesus said after the Holy Ghost high has come upon you, you shall receive power. Power! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Use the power that God has given you. Greater is he that's within you than he that is in the world. Thank you, Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach, become a believer. I'm not playing with God. I'm sick of folk playing church. Woman up there asking me for prayer, and she up there having sex with a married man. That's why her prayers ain't being answered. How you up there lusting at another woman's husband, and then wonder why God don't answer prayer in church. Now you in everybody's prayer line. Pastor, can you pray for me? I'm not talking about you out there. I'm just talking to somebody I've dealt with. Oh, I need help. Done cast the devil out of you 20 times. Now you done came back with more devils because you don't want to stay free. When Jesus sets you free, stay free. Stay in his word. Stay in prayer. Stay in fasting. Keep praising the Lord. There's something you got to do. After God sets you free, the Bible says, draw nigh unto God and, let, and, and God will draw nigh unto you. Resist the devil and he shall flee. How do you resist the devil? With the word of God. Stay in your word. Keep your mind on Jesus. And you'll keep your mind in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. So and say stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians chapter 6 verse number 10. Finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand. Someone say stand against the wiles of the devil. This is a spiritual warfare. The weapons of our warfare is not caught up, but they might see through God until they're pulling down the strongholds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to give you a scripture right now and YouTube land is going to help you. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers. I'm going to give you a scripture the Lord have gave me. Get a chance to read the book of Ephesians chapter 6, starting verse number 10. I want to give you something in YouTube land that's going to help you. To think more positive. You've got to think positive. Get rid of the negative and bring in the positive. Many of you are thinking too negative. So that's why bad things happen. Because you're surrounded by so many negative people. Here it is. I'm telling Tyler this today. God bless Tolliver and Angela. All you out there, Diane and Shepherd, handmaiden. 
Brother Jackson, all of you out there, Harry. It is. I'll call more names out in the future. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. The Bible verse that says, Think on these things which are lovely and of good report in the name of Jesus. It's in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, which states, Finally, brothers and sisters, read, Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Whatever, I said, I said whatsoever, is whatever. Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, I praiseworthy, think about such things. Think positive. Don't think negative. Think positive. How you do that? Get away from negative people. Who don't talk faith, but they're always talking negative. I don't want to be around negative people. I got to be around positive people who are more positive, not jealous, not play hating, not competitive. If you marry to someone negative, are you with friends who are negative? They can block your blessings. They're not speaking positive in your life. They're not saying, well, you can do it. You're going to make it. Why do you think Jesus put the people out of the room when Jerry's daughter passed away? She was 12 years old. And Jesus said, she only sleeps. Jesus just was about to raise her from the dead. They began to laugh in the scorn. They didn't believe her. Jesus doesn't respond to unbelief. He hates it. I don't blame him. Jesus responds to faith. Every time Jesus did a miracle, he said, your faith has made you whole. He responds to faith. Jesus did not need faith. He already had the power to heal. He put him out. It depends on the atmosphere. He put them unbelieving people out the room before he brought the girl back to life from the dead. On the day of Pentecost, in the upper room, in Acts chapter number two, the Bible said they was on one accord and one place. See, they was on one accord. The atmosphere had to be right. He told the disciples to go in the upper room until you be endowed with power from on high. You're going to receive the Holy Ghost. When they the upper room, they was up there for 50 days. Praise God. On the 50th day, feast means, uh, Pentecost means feast. On the day of Pentecost, 50th day, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind and it filled the house where they were sitting. And they began to speak in other tongues and cloven tongues, which is diversity of tongues. And it was all filled with the Holy Ghost. It sat upon each of them as fire. The fire represented the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I heard Jeremiah said in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. And his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. Now many preachers, y'all say, and Jeremiah said it just like fire. No, you y'all you done skipped over something. Jeremiah said, and his word was in my heart as a burning fire. Don't forget the word. Y'all skipped over the word. Then he can say, Jeremiah said, just like fire, said his word was in my heart as a burning fire. His word is fire. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. St. John chapter 1. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Verse 14. Hallelujah. Notice on the day of Pentecost, the atmosphere had to be right. They had to be on one accord. They couldn't have been jealous of one another or stabbing each other in the back or backbiting each other while they was waiting for the promise. Why they was waiting. Why they was waiting for the promise. They was waiting for the Holy Ghost to come. They had to be on one accord with the right spirit, not division. They had to be on one accord. The atmosphere was right. They had faith, not unbelief. They believed that, that they believed what Jesus told them. I'm going to send you the promise, the Holy Ghost. The comforter. And it came on the 50th day. They spoke with other tongues. Oh my God, they had Holy Ghost Church. I mean, it was a Holy Ghost party that day. I mean, I mean people was filled with the Holy Ghost. They were drunk in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. It wants to come upon you and live in you. And that's why the Bible said, Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. Come on. 
You don't know what you possess. You don't know what kind of power you got. You got Jesus. Use it. Now, I pray, but I'm going to teach you how to use the authority that God has given you. It is. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go to it. Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. You overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Because I want to tell you, those in YouTube land, you have the power. You have Jesus, you can overcome. You have Jesus, you got the victory. Come on, tell us when I got the victory. Now, I'm going to keep the victory by staying with Jesus, by staying in God's word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Have you read that Jesus is the bread? Spelled the word bread. It's spelled B-R-E-A-D. Take the view of bread. You got read. And you got read. When you read Jesus' word, when you read God's word, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And though he was dead, and yet shall he live. And he that believeth in me shall never die. I thank God for his word. His word is going to live forever. You say, heaven and earth will pass away. Oh, Lord, but my word is going to live forever. Thank you, Jesus. But have God's word in the heart. That's why David said, have thy words, have I hid in my heart. I want the word of God in my heart, not just only in my lips, just my mouth. I want to walk where I talk. So for all of me, in order for me to walk where I talk, I must have the word in my heart and obey it. Not just only pray, but obey. Someone said pray and obey. They live holy every day. We thank God for the comments here, wonderful comments. Jackie Jackson, God bless you, Jackie Johnson. We got your prayer request. Linda Lewis, you said good afternoon. God bless you too, Linda. Francis Carlo, God bless you. Praise the Lord. We praying for you. Oh, that was not the video I want to go to. There's some prayer requests I saw in the other video. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Thank God for your handmaid. He said, Preacher Warren, preaching and singing in the rain. Yes, I was. He said, Glory to the Most High God. He said, $1,500 a night to play bass guitar back then was amazing. I know people that don't make that in two weeks. Yeah, I told my testimony how they offered me $1,500 a night and the Lord said, Turn it down. I call you to preach. You want me to play for the devil. I turn it down. So you're saying, uh, Preacher Warren has a testimony like never before. Thank you. Thank God you turned your life over to Christ. Praise God. Thank you. The Lord used you mightily last year against the witches on my job. Yeah, I was talking about witches. Y'all know about that. I got the victory. He said, please pray for me to be successful in my job. You will be successful. I'm speaking it right now. With you. We're going to agree together in faith. We're going to agree together in faith. Satan has been stealing a few cells of mine. Pray the Lord turn my customers back to me. We're going to believe God that God will return your customers back to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And that you will be successful. It will happen. We believe it. It's, go it's happening right now. Praise him for it. Hallelujah. God bless Rebecca. Always leaving good comments. Praise God for X-Ray D B7M. You say you're watching from you UK. God bless my friends in UK. God bless you. Thank for tuning in on the YouTube. God bless you and UK. You said Pastor Warren's amazing. Where did God be the glory? Amazing grace. He's amazing. Thank God for amazing grace. Watching from UK. God bless you to our friend from UK. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Junior, Severus, God bless you, brother. I'm glad you had a safe trip to Baltimore. You said my prayer request, I need prayer for deliverance from a curse uh, that was put on through back masking. I was listening to a music record on YouTube. A Christian ministry was showing this. I heard it and was cursed by it. We don't, don't listen to it anymore. Praise God. I guess he didn't know that it would have a negative effect. Okay, I see what you mean, my brother. On me. He was just trying to show people that the music industry is evil. And now I'm hearing voices. I need prayer that this will go away and I will be delivered. But right now, we're praying for you right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, lay hands on yourself, young man. 
And we're going to pray the prayer of faith that the demons will leave you alone and go back to the pits of hell. Father, in the name of Jesus, take your hands off his mind. I command the demons of darkness to go back to the abyss. Let your angels, God, surround him right now. Deliver him, God, from that curse. Deliver him, God, from the demons of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus, take authority over Satan. Deliver him, God, and work a miracle. Be free. Now, in order to stay free, stay in God's word. God going to work a miracle on your behalf. I believe God can work a miracle for you. I believe God can make witchcraft disappear out of your life and tell the demons to leave you alone and go back to hell. And God will send angels. Now, stay free. Stay in the word. Fast and pray so you can stay free. The devil will try to come back. But you can tell the devil, get back. In the name of Jesus, stay in your Bible. Stay in your word. God is bringing you a peace of mind. Don't got to smoke no weed. God is all we need. All right? Dying Shepherd, God is blessing you right now. We have another prayer request. Thank God for Dying Shepherd, my prayer warrior. And hand meeting, who's on fire for God. We have some more prayer requests on here. Uh, people ask for prayer. I believe I saw it here somewhere. I can find it. Jackie Jackson, you say you stand in need of a financial miracle. Yeah, I know. I know it's hard. I know it's a struggle. That's what I was saying earlier. You notice when you begin to serve God over something, your finances get attacked. <laughs> Money getting attacked. You got you begin to lack. See, that's the trick of the enemy. The devil trying to discourage you. And it look like that the wicked look like it's getting more blessed than the righteous. <laughs> like every time you try to do the right thing, it looks like it gets harder and it's more of a struggle. And look like folk who ain't trying to live right. And trying to do right, look like they get more blessed than the ones who are trying to do right. Have you felt that way before? Even Habakkuk felt that way. He told God, Lord, why is the wicked getting more blessed than the righteous? I know I'm not perfect, but I'm trying to do right, and I'm going through all these struggles. <laughs> you felt that way before? It look like folk jealous of you got more than you. He you ain't how to got nothing. Well, God is going to give you a breakthrough. A breakthrough is coming for you. Think on these things which are lovely of good report. Begin to imagine yourself being blessed. Begin to imagine yourself. Start thinking good thoughts. Not negative thoughts. Get away from negative people. Who don't encourage you. Get around. Say, Lord, put positive people in my atmosphere. Positive. Many of you are married to people who are negative. They omens. They make bad things happen. Why? Because they're negative. You keep being around negative folks, bad things happen. Get away from negative people. And so, Lord, put folk in my life, people in my life who are saved, sanctified, who know how to get a prayer through. And when you surround yourself with positive people, that's when you get your breakthrough because many times negative people can block up and hinder your blessings. They're jinxed. They call it jinx in the world. In the Bible, they call it the curse. The reason why they curse because they don't want to obey, don't want to live right. They done been to the prayer line 30 times already and still ain't delivered. Prayers ain't being answered because they do not want to obey. They want to live in sin. They want to be wicked. They want to be evil. And the Bible declares in Romans chapter 1, verse 32, they are worthy of death, which means they're worthy of hell because they don't want God. They're cursing at God. They're jealous. They keep, they keep doing the witchcraft and don't want to repent. But yeah, they want to get blessed but don't want to come out of mess. God ain't going to answer mess. Only answer God will give mess is his wrath. Because the Bible said that God is angry at the wicked every day. That's why they're going through. So you got to separate yourself. That's what the Bible said. Come out from among them and be separated and touch not the unclean thing. Don't touch the drugs. Let the Lord give you a hug. Don't touch the crack. Run the way Christ is at and get out the prayer mat. Don't touch the cocaine. Just get in God's domain. And when you get in God's domain, he'll set you free from cracking cocaine. And when God sets you free from cracking cocaine, you no longer will be insane. Woo! Hallelujah! Now you can have a testimony. And say, look what the Lord has brought you from. Yes! Thank you, Jesus. Now live right. Follow peace with all men. And holiness, while which no man shall see the Lord. Yes! Yes! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is going to give you a breakthrough in your finances. We don't need weight. Shake off weight. Lay aside every weight. Every sin, that's so easy to be sectioned. Some people are just dead weight. 
Every time they get in trouble. Can you pray for me? But they never pray for you. They're just draining you. And many times, the reason why they're going through trouble, many of them, because they're doing witchcraft against you. And it, it doesn't backfire against them. Here they're asking you for prayer and being jealous of you at the same time. Every time they get in trouble, you're the one that come to you for prayer. Can you pray for me? And the reason why they're going through because they're stabbing you in the back. They're working against you. They don't want to see you be successful. So whatever evil they wished against you, it doesn't backfire against them. Because what goes around comes around and it doesn't, you're reaping what you sow. That's what I mean. You're going through stuff. Not you. I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about these wicked people. Can you pray for me? But yet you still got them voodoo dolls in your house. God didn't tell you to throw, out the, throw away the voodoo dolls. Throw away the Ouija boards. Many of you still got it in your house. Still going out and seeing the psychics. God is God and told you. Regard not them who have familiar spirits and neither seek after the wizards, for I am the Lord your God. And you still up there worshiping Harry Potter and Sabrina, the teenage witch. Disobedient. That leaves room for the devil to attack. Attacking your finance, attacking your body. You're having nightmares. You didn't heard the preacher preach. Heard men of God preach the word and the truth, and you're still coming against the truth. Your heart is hardened. So now you're going around circles. Many of you women have a hard time getting a husband in another relationship because in your last relationship, you didn't put your husband, no, you didn't put your daughter up to lying on your husband and saying that he raped her and he never raped her. And there's cases where they are sex offenders. And there's other cases where men have been lied on. There are people who are locked in jail who don't even belong in prison. You've been lied on. I hear the Holy Ghost say, God is going to dis dismiss your case. We got folk in prison who've been lied on, who don't belong in prison. I hear the Lord say, your case will be dismissed. That the righteous judge will tell the judge, let him out of prison. He don't belong in there. He's been lied on. I know the case is like that. Women put the daughter up to lying, saying he raped me. And of course, they're going to believe the girl. And now got the man up in prison over something he didn't do. And now you wonder why bad things happen to you and why your relationships are not working out. You put a curse upon yourself by lying on that man and knowing he's innocent. And knowing she's innocent. Talking some deep stuff, y'all. And the curse follows. To every man you get involved with, it never works out. Bad things happen. Because you are sucky bus, you are omen. You hop from one man to another man, doing witchcraft, trying to bring men of God down. You hop from one woman to another woman, trying to destroy women. And that stuff backfires, and that's why your prayers ain't getting through. So I'm talking on some deep stuff that a lot of folks ain't going to talk on. You're going to all these prayer lines. They're like you ain't getting no deliverance. And you're paying all these psychic readers 500 something dollars and picking up more demons. And picking up more spirits. I don't mess with witch doctors. Because witches mess with evil spirits. A lot of us sit right in church. You got more witches and warlocks in church. They remind me of Hollywood. Oh, come on. Diddy made a pact with the devil. All his sins caught up to him. Now look what happened to Diddy. All them sex parties, they done caught up to him. Oh, come on. Your sins will find you out. Your sins will catch up to you. Unless you say, Lord, forgive me for my sins, I repent. I'm coming, Lord, forgive me, wash away my sins. And many of them blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. Only sin that God would not forgive is blasphemy. God bless you. I know this was a raw message. Didn't know that God was going to give me a raw message today. But you know how I preach you are, and got to keep it real. You say, Lord, forgive me for my sins, he'll forgive you. So I'm going to make it right. Forgive each other. I know forgiveness ain't always easy because your heart been so broken. You surprised, you'd be surprised how God will bless you when you forgive each other. Say, I'm sorry for doing you wrong. Say, Lord, I'm sorry for playing church. Can you forgive me, Jesus? I repent. I want my heart to be right with you. I don't want to go to hell. If you do not know Jesus as your Savior, tomorrow not guaranteed to you or me. God's the day if you hear my voice. Harden not your heart. Just say, Lord, come into my heart and save me. Forgive me for my sins. I'm going to pray the prayer of faith right now on YouTube land all around the world. For those who have been bound by heroin, Jesus can set you free.
I'm so glad Jesus can set you free. I'm so glad he can set you free. I'm so glad he can set you free. Singing glory, hallelujah. He can set you free. Well, I love about Jesus. He'll give you power to stay free. I'm going to pray for you right now around the world. We thank God for drug addicts who came to Jesus. We're praying for you. Many of you have been depressed. God can give you rest. Father, in the name of Jesus, heal broken hearts. Somebody been suicidal. Somebody been getting suicidal thoughts. We command the demons of depression to go, go back to the abyss, back to the abyss. In the name of Jesus, be free. Now receive you the Holy Ghost so God can give you power to stay free and live holy. Pray and obey. So Lord, come into my heart and save me. Forgive me for my sins. Be Lord in my life. I believe you was crucified. And God has raised you from the dead. I want to be saved. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in my heart that you have God has raised you from the dead. I want to be saved. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is the promise that God has for you and your children. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. You obey Acts 2 38. You can make it to the pearly gates. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. And don't play hate. Acts 2 38. Obey Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and verse 10. Repent from sin. And let the Lord live within and comprehend. Praise God. He's coming again. And you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. Or else you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You'll be born again today. God can do a transformation in your life and make your life brand new because he loves you. You are somebody special. He loves you. You are special to God. It don't matter what color you are. He loves you. There ain't nothing racist about God. You can have a conversation with Jesus today, wherever you at. And say, Lord, heal me. Heal me, God. He'll heal you. Save me, God. Wash away my sins. Use me, Lord, for your service. I surrender. All those are YouTube land. I feel God is touching somebody right now, even while I'm praying. I believe God is delivering somebody right now. I believe God is going to work a miracle for you. And make sure when God works a miracle for you, do not forget about God. For with God, all things are possible. Don't forget about God. Don't be like, don't be, don't be like the ten lepers. Jesus healed ten of them. The only one came back to say thank you. The other ones, they cut out. So I got my miracle now. I ain't got to thank Jesus. Don't be like that. If I want to get blessed and get miracles, but don't want to live right. If I want to get miracles, but don't want to obey. That's why you found them, uh, them prosperity preachers, because they ain't going to tell you to repent. They can say, you going to get a miracle. You ain't got to live right, according to them. Still, folks still shacking and committing adultery, still doing the same thing. You going to all these so-called miracle services where the pastor is paying folk to lie, to sit in the wheelchair and act like they're sick and they never was sick. This year they're getting out the wheelchair. Oh, when the pastor just laid hands on me, I feel a surge of electricity just went into my body. I'm healed. Hallelujah. You never was sick. You was paid to lie. It's false. Staged. The man ain't preaching repentance. He ain't tell you he must be born again. He ain't warning you about hell. Or he just wants more money. Now I give me two thousand dollars now, y'all. And the money is going to devil worship and sex trafficking. And you don't know where your money going at. It's going to wicked stuff. Come on, be careful where you sowing your money at. Sow it to a true ministry. A true man of God, a woman of God. Then God will bless you. Then God will prosper. Then God will meet your need. When you, when you give to the right ministry, whoever God leads you to give to, God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this message. If you didn't, don't get mad at me. I love you. That's why I preach this way. It's the word God give to me to see you free. When you obey, God will bless you. This message also applied to me too. If I don't live right, I'm going to hell. I ain't trying to go no hell. I have to live what I preach. Lord, create me a clean heart. I renew the right spirit within me. I can feel the presence of the Lord right here. He's here. I see Jesus in the midst. He's here. He's here. He's here. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. God is in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. God is in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the praises go up, the blessings come down 
When the praises go up, the blessings come down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Let's give him praise. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Give him praise. And when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And your enemies will come down. Let God arise and let all his enemies be scattered. Anyone who want to send to our cash app, this flame of fire eight under Pastor Warren Adams. I want to thank God for Brother Joshua who sent an incredible blessing to the cash app and Sadidra and Caleb. I'm honored. I'm humbled. Praise God. You should have told me the other day. Thank you for sending the blessing. And may God continue to increase you. People who have sent to this ministry have gotten blessed. If you're led by the Holy Ghost, praise God. He'll meet your need. Because you're giving to God's house. You're giving to God's ministry. Whoever God leads you to. If you want to sin to this cash up, it's Flame of Fire 8. Under Pastor Warren Adams. W-A-R-R-E-N. A-D-D-A-M-S. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty God we serve. Again, Flame of Fire 8. The Pastor Warren Adams. W-A-R-R-E-N A-D-A-M-S And most of all, give your heart to Jesus He's coming again We must be born again God got a great plan for your life In Jesus' name we pray Amen And amen God bless you Hallelujah, hallelujah When the praises go